I thank the gentleman for calling this hearing and for yielding to me. And uh, this hearing will address a series of legislative proposals, most, m most of which address capital formation issues. They are intended to make it easier for companies to raise capital. I am proud to be a co-sponsor of one of the bills, the SEC Small Business Advocate Act, which my colleague, Mr. Carney, has worked so hard on. Uh, this bill would create an office of the advocate for small business capital formation within the SEC and would also create a permanent small business advisory committee at the SEC. This is a common sense proposal and is actually modeled off of the provision in Dodd-Frank that established the SEC's investor advisory committee. Ms. Cinema and Mr. Fitzpatrick also have a bill that would provide very targeted relief on the auditor as, at, as, attestation requirement in the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. All of the Democrats on this committee, myself included, voted against a bill last Congress that would have provided a blanket exemption from this requirement for roughly 75% of all public companies. But I am intrigued by this uh, compromise bill from Ms. Cinema, which is substantially more narrowly targeted. In effect, the bill would only provide limited relief and only to companies that can prove that they don't have enough revenues to pay for the auditor attestation requirement. Uh, so I will be very interested in hearing more from our witnesses of, about this proposed compromise. Uh, finally, the Due Process Restoration Act would overhaul the SEC's administrative courts. I am wa very concerned of making changes that could weaken the SEC's enforcement authorities, as well as their ability to quickly and fairly uh, prosecute wrongdoers. It's also important to remember that the SEC has long had the authority to try certain cases in an administrative forum rather than in federal court, and we simply expanded this authority in Dodd-Frank because it's been such a useful tool. In fact, people forget that much of our insider trading law was developed in an administrative case. The, the insider trading case of of Katie Roberts in 1961 was an administrative opinion, and the Supreme Court later adopted much of the Katie Roberts analysis as the basis uh, for insider trading law. So I think the SEC's administrative forum has been a useful tool, and I'll be interested to hear from our witnesses about this proposal. I look forward to all of your testimony and the exchange we will have. Thank you for being here, and I yield back. Thank you.